This is the Rules Committee, um, March 3. Um, first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes of November 4. Okay. Any discussion? Any discussion? No, thank okay. you. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, um, citizen comment. Do we have a sign up sheet? And are there people on the list? There are no uh, <coughs> speakers. So, discussion of the 2014 City Council Goals Implementation. City Manager, are you making a presentation? Yes, I am, Madam okay. Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the committee, good evening. Um, good evening. Thank you for uh, uh, moving into the room here this evening. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we. Uh, as we go through the agenda this evening. Uh, this is kind of a, a cleanup meeting, uh, kind of kicking stock of where we are on a variety of issues and, and where you'd like to move forward as a rules committee over the next several months. Uh, the first is uh, to talk about the City Council's goals. Uh, as you know, the Council adopted uh, six goals uh, moving forward uh, for the year two dealing uh, with streets and uh, facilities, and one dealing with economic development, one dealing with fiscal policies, and one dealing with uh, uh, at-risk fa uh, families. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about each of those and what our plans are uh, for next steps with that and to get your feedback to see if, uh, if that makes sense. Um, as far as uh, city streets and city facilities, uh, we plan to come to the council uh, on uh, March the 17th uh, with an update as to where we are with the implementation of the CIP as well as to continue the discussions uh, that you had last fall with Gene Bonander on, on capital planning. So we have uh, a framework uh, with the 2014 uh, capital plan, which we're moving forward with, uh, but we will be asking you a little bit uh, on uh, the 17th uh, what your desires are for additional meetings uh, for planning discussions. Um, we Jeff, have, may I interrupt you for of course. a minute? The 17th is St. Patrick's Day. That's correct. We are going to have a meeting on St. Patrick's Day. That is the plan, yes. It is also the night before the election. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, then I that's up to the council. Okay, after, I just wanted, so I didn't forget. Just okay. When you mentioned the 17th, I think we. Go ahead. Well, the plan at this point, though, is to, is to come to the council on the 17th and talk about, uh, talk about streets and facilities. Um, the, the water and sewer infrastructure, uh, my sense is that the council is pretty much up to speed through the conversations we had at the end of last year uh, regarding water and sewer infrastructure. So we're just going to leave that uh, to move forward and continue. Is that a, a correct assumption? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do good. So we'll, we'll spend the part of the 17th then uh, with an update on uh, facilities and streets. Uh, another uh, of the council's goals is economic development. Uh, since uh, the majority of you are on the economic development committee, um, my sense is that the discussions that are taking place at the economic development committee are covering uh, where we're at as far as moving forward on economic development issues. Is that a correct assumption? And I am not on the committee, but yeah. I'm just still. Yes. I was just going to ask. She pointed at me. Well, I, th I guess a question would be: Would would the would would the would the council want to have a a um, a full meeting on the night of an economic development committee meeting? Have Alderman Braithwaite, Alderman Wilson there uh, to kind of go through an overview. We've not done sort of a, a soup to nuts discussion of, of all the issues probably in about six months. Uh, we could do that at a full council meeting as well on a Monday. Um, but I think since the majority of you are on economic development, it may make sense at least to think about that. Alder um, Which I appreciate. Generally speaking, we do get, at least I get the packet, I assume you get the packet yeah. as well. So I think that uh, I'm able to follow it as closely as is appropriate. But if we wanted to do a brief overview just for. Yeah. Can I suggest something? To the chair. That we, um, but I didn't want to interrupt you that we um, perhaps have a more um, detailed presentation at the next Economic Development Committee meeting okay. and invite everybody and encourage the two of you who aren't on the committee to come. One of the really helpful things in that packet, I think, is the monthly report mm -hmm. that the staff gives us. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming. There's so much stuff. Frequently, this things they're working on never come to fruition, but at least they're out there 
working on him. Right. But I think that might be might be a good time to have an update. Okay. Um, so that would be on March the um, the fourth. March the twenty sixth. Um, we have that at Rotary. That would be a good place to do it. Yeah, they are scheduled to be at Rotary yeah. International's uh, uh, headquarters on the 26th. So, um, Mayor Tisdall, I think you're going to be out of town that day at the Northwest Municipal Conference Legislative Days. So, if you're okay with, we'll, we'll, uh, I, we'll I'm not sure if we figured out Erica video. Well, we don't normally video the economic development. No, no meetings, we should so. go. Well, and I we think we'll go. talk about maybe perhaps <laughs> moving these meetings. I think meetings someone can fill me in. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that on the schedule then uh, for March 26th, and we'll have Johanna and, and her team uh, do an update there. Uh, another of the council's goals uh, deals with financial policies. Uh, we also plan on the 17th to have uh, Marty Lyons uh, come do a uh, year-end budget report uh, with how we've ended the year, so we'll, we, we can talk uh, in general terms about where things are at then. Um, my sense from the discussions that we had was that the council was generally uh, pleased with the policies that we had. It was just a matter of keeping on them. So, um, you know, my, my sense would be to, if you would like to have a, a more in-depth discussion of, about where we're at with the, the policies through the discussion that we had last fall, um, you know, we did not get into them page by page. If that's the kind of discussion you'd like to have, then I'd like to schedule that for a, uh, you know, sometime either later in, in March. Uh, April, we're constrained because of a variety of factors. We only have two council meetings during the month of April. Um, so uh, perhaps we could do that uh, in uh, May. Or if you'd like, there is a fifth Monday in March. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Since there's a fifth Monday in March, can't we do a fifth Monday rather than the 17th since it's the night before election? So could we not have that all that on the 31st rather than on the 17th? I'm looking real know? quick just to make sure that that's there's nothing idea. else on oh, the city calendar. To, to, um, move our, to move the meeting. Yeah, that's not. So, so if, if Madam Chair, members of the committee, if the council would like to do that, we could we could not have the meeting on the 17th. We could have the meeting on the 31st. Um, talk about the capital improvements. Talk about the budget um, at that point. Uh, quite honestly, another piece of the budget discussion I would like to have with the council is where we stand with snow costs. Um, you know, my, my well, maybe by then the snow will be finished. Well, maybe. <laughs> be um, um, but, uh, but, 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 but clearly, I think we've said publicly we we are over budget uh, substantially. I don't. We have not gone public with a, a number uh, recently, uh, but clearly it continues to climb. And so my concern is that we are probably approaching a number that we will not just be able to easily absorb within our budget for 14 and that we'll need to spend a little bit more time um, uh, discussing. So we can be prepared to, to at least also have at least the beginnings of that discussion with the council on, um, on March 31st as well. The total on the bills list, the last bills list under the snow, it was outrageous and I just kept very quiet because I couldn't really speak to it. It was huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. And I think that was just that one bill. And, and I think generally people, I think the community standard has been we just do it. Yep. Um, and I think we've we've tried to be mindful of that without completely breaking the bank. But uh, you know, here we are at the beginning of March. We have more snow today. More so expected over the next uh, week or ten days. I can't um, hear you. And then it's November and December. I'm sorry. And then November and December. Yeah, there. So, uh, but 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 we're only we're only two months into the fiscal year. So that's the good news. The bad news is we're only two months into the fiscal year. Um, so we'll I mean, be, we have no choice. I mean, what can we do? So we'll be prepared to we'll be prepared to have uh, uh, that budget discussion as well. But back to the policies and procedures. Would you like a presentation um, that night to kind of refresh your memory about the discussions with Ms. Bonander on the policies and procedures or? You're, you're, you're content to, to kind of move forward. Uh, we made those transfers uh, to the various funds as part of the budget. I think that was part of the council's discussion with being more mindful of policies. Anybody? Yeah. As long as it's in the packet, I want to, if we need to have a presentation about <coughs> what we're getting. Yeah, just as far as the recap goes. A recap. 
Okay. And what else would be on the agenda then for that fifth Monday meeting? We would have a presentation regarding uh, the capital plan, uh, talking about streets and facilities. We would have a year-end budget report, and then we would have the discussion regarding um, okay. uh, city council uh, financial policies. And we would we would do a summary of the discussion uh, that the has already been had, and we would just put that in writing, and Could then let the council decide how it likes to proceed. When Marty does his presentation, <clears throat> could he highlight some of the well-known taxes and fees that we have. Um, as far as how they performed in 2013? Yeah, right, because they're, they're an important addendum to the revenues for our budget. And I don't think we pay, I mean, we read about it, but we don't pay a lot of public attention to it. And okay. it's a major part of our, the way we run the city, those funds. Some may be over, some may be under. The liquor tax is doing well. It is. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, the last council goal uh, deals with at-risk families and individuals. Um, we had talked a little bit about uh, uh, some changes that we are contemplating in the, the health department. Uh, a lot of those changes are predicated on what occurs uh, on March 18th with the township dissolution. Um, so I, I think that uh, perhaps uh, a future meeting either at the Rules Committee uh, or sometime uh, later past March 31, I think would be appropriate to talk about that because I think that would be, if the township is dissolved, uh, we'd like to talk to you about some other organizational changes that might make sense. Um, if the township's not dissolved, they'll at least know that. Um, and then I think the council can have an informed discussion based on, on that decision as well. So, um, Madam Chair, I'm not sure if that, that makes sense for a Rules Committee discussion. Um, given that there's not a lot of pending business before the Rules Committee, at least as of, as of right this moment. Uh, so we could perhaps come to you um, in April at the Rules Committee and talk about that. Because I also think if, if the township is dissolved, um, um, we'll need to start talking about uh, you know, what that means, means in a practical sense with the, the actual dissolution. Uh, or we could do all that in human services. Well, it's a classic reason for the Rules Committee to exist for that kind of structure issues all right so, so if you'd like then we'll go ahead and, and calendar for the rules committee in april the discussion of at-risk families we'll talk about where we stand uh vis-a-vis -vis the township at that point which will be will be known um, but we'll when i when i said that i i didn't mean specifically a risk family but the issue of the township sure. whether it passed or failed okay that well i think we'll put we'll, we'll plan on talking about the township at the Rules Committee regardless. And then the resulting issue with the... Okay. So if that's okay with the rest of the council, um, we'll plan on doing that um, at the April Rules Committee. Can you, can you tell me, um, Wally, how meetings have gone, and I don't know if you attended them, about the township issue? I know we had 8th and 9th Ward had one, but I think people came for other issues, not for that. But we I think there, there was some, there's been some discussion there. There was some discussion at Alderman Tendum's ward meeting. I know Alderman Fisk has a ward meeting coming there, up tomorrow. Were there specific meetings? Well, there were two. There was the Central Street neighbors uh, had a meeting on the night of another city meeting, so I was not present. Um, I'm not, don't think any staff that's in the room was present. Mr. Smith was, pre Mr. Smith and Mr. Seidenberg, I think, were present. Or, well, Mr. Seidenberg was present. Uh, <laughs> How did it go, Mr. How did it go, Bill? <laughs> I had very fortunate to be there. Uh, Can you report? I'm just on the observer. Were there a lot of people, things were, like, I think we reported there were under 20. Yes, okay. I think that's what you did. And there, there is, and I'm happy to share, I think the article was in the print edition of the review uh, this past Thursday. Um, there was an additional meeting on Saturday, uh, which I did attend at Evanston Township High School, which the League of Women Voters put on. Uh, that was attended by about 20 individuals, um, lasted about an hour, hour and 10 minutes. Um, the format was uh, some in initial presentations by the panel, which consisted of Avada Thomas, uh, Bonnie Wilson, and um, Alderman Grover. Um, and then there were questions, that they collected questions in writing from members of the audience and uh, read those questions from a moderator. Um, I, Alderman Grover, I, I didn't sense there was really any new ground broken at the meeting. 
as far as I think just issues of what happens if it's dissolved, what happens if it doesn't isn't dissolved, uh, discussion of funding, uh, how that will continue. So um, those were those were the questions. And Bonnie's and Yvonne's perspective on what goes on in their offices. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, at my last board meeting, um, there was a short presentation from um, the folk who are proposing that folk um, not dissolve the township. But other than that, and it was just we gave them time on the agenda, and that was it for that. But that wasn't. There were some questions from residents, and they talked back and forth, but nothing of any, nothing that hasn't been said before. Okay, so that takes us through the six council goals. Do I need to go review what we've decided, or everybody? Well, we got it. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, so um, discussion of, um, want to talk about the room, 24 now? Or? Uh, we can do boards and commissions next. Oh, you want to do boards and, okay, I, I miss it. Okay, uh, discussion on boards and commissions, annual goal setting, training, and other issues. Do you want them to come here, make reports, et cetera, et cetera? Um, That's the issue. If, if the council recalls uh, in late 2009, early uh, 2010, the, uh, the Rules Committee spent several meetings uh, reviewing a report that was done by the League of Women Voters uh, regarding boards and commissions. There were some changes made, um, not very many changes made uh, to the the 40 odd uh, boards and commissions that we have. Um, it was the desire of the, the council at that point to have the individual boards and commissions do a, a work plan. Um, they then over the next probably nearly three years uh, came in groups of one, two, and three uh, to the rules committee, made presentations with their work plans. Um, in talking with Alderman Rainey in preparation uh, for tonight's meeting, I think we both agreed that perhaps uh, that process wasn't as, as fruitful as we perhaps hope it might it might have been when it was first developed in, at the end of 2009, early 2010. Um, so we've been through that cycle. The council elections have come and gone. Um, is it the, the committee's desire uh, to revisit that, to have those same kind of presentations as we did? Uh, would the committee be interested in alternate uh, ways of doing this, uh, but clearly we spent a tremendous amount of resources with our boards and commissions. Um, lots of staff, lots of time, lots of evenings spent by volunteers, and you know, would, would, would appreciate direction from the committee as to what you think is appropriate for next steps in working with them. Alderman Grover, did you? Yeah. yeah. No. <coughs> and then Alderman Holmes. Boards or commissions or committees that want to talk to the council, that want to, have we, have we, instead of, so good. We're fine to come to us if we ask you want to um, have a meeting with the city council and if you have concerns or issues or How about a survey of mm -hmm. the different boards. Um, uh, other than the housing um, commission, has there ever been any consolidation or talk of or review of all of these boards and commissions to see if there's overlap or something where there could be some collapsing of some of them? We tried to do yes. that. Yes, we did. I think we made more committees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a terrace like a wedding guest <laughs> list. It just ended up more and not less. <laughs> you never revisit the wedding guest that? list. Who'd you try to find? I don't remember. This is what. Okay, you know, you share with we were trying to merge the, the Arts Council and Public Art. And right, I remember that. For the, uh, we, we were not appreciated. Mm -hmm. were not appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, all the I just didn't remember. I didn't remember doing it all. I remember some of them, and that's why I use the housing as an example. But um, I just wonder, you know, um, we try as a part of our. Well, well, we tried, but we tried with some. Yeah, um, <laughs> there's a whole lot more out there, and I that's I all I'm saying. We have more than most cities don't. Want. Absolutely, so we do. By twenty or thirty. Yes. <laughs> Um, That's it? That's all? I'm just wondering how many of us have either attended a board or commission meeting or at least watched the few that are televised. Have you? Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and I, I'm suggesting that we take it upon ourselves to take a look at some of them. I, I watched a meeting the other night a non-aldermanic meeting. Mm -hmm. I was appalled, just appalled. Um, 
it, it's it was it was almost rude. Which one? I'm not saying because I don't want to do. I don't we only televise the land use committees. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> planning, plan, or ZBA. We don't televise Spark. So it was. It was. It was um, unfortunate. And I've seen it before. It's not a one-time thing. So I, I think training is an issue. And then who knows about some of the other committees? Um, yes. Yeah. No, I think there are a few committees that have indicated um, at some point they'd like to come forward with some uh, ideas. Uh, one would be um, Housing and Homelessness Commission, I believe. We've talked about coming forward with some things regarding um, inclusionary uh, measures for uh, possible condo conversions, things like that. Um, just ideas that we've talked about that need a better presentation, possibly. Just to let you know what, what direction we're hoping to go in on the housing. Well, you're homes. supposed to be making reports, right? I yes. Mean, so we are. But the housing one is the only one we've had success with, and that's why I started out. Yeah, with I think one. there is. I think there's. I, I think there's always there's so much information to know about housing mm -hmm. uh, that it. I think it's really good for that for that committee, my committee, to touch base once in a while about the things that we're considering. Yeah. Um, the second was the Board of Ethics, I think. I know they had some issues. They wanted to come forward uh, after a certain hearing last year. Um, I had my own issues with them, and I know that I've worked with legal to try and reply to some of the concerns I have had. So I think that's one also that wants to come forward. And I know the Preservation Commission I spoke to recently, now they've asked about possibly coming to award meetings, but you know they could also come back with a better understanding of the frustrations they're having with council possibly not agreeing with some of the measures they've put forward. So I think those are three committees right there that I would certainly like to engage with, whether it's at um, you know rules, whether it's at a council meeting or, or at a ward meeting. Um, I think they've got a lot to say. I think they're all things that are well, somewhat on my mind. What's holding them up from making contact? No, it's not making contact. If we had a, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't know that any of them have resolved what issues might be. I think I there's just potential. I think there's a lot of discussion, and I know that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where the board of ethics stands with some of the things they have talked about. I'm not sure. I know housing and homelessness would, you know, would like to fit into a schedule at some point, or just make a, you know, an appointment. Okay. Uh, and the other being, what was it? I said, um, preservation. You know, they have talked to me personally about things that I've opposed and um, at council level, and I would like to not always be the bad guy <laughs> at council level opposing things, you know, uh, especially with, with regard to residential uh, preservation. But you're, you know, it's a recommending body. We, yes. we can make a decision. So yeah, I mean, I, I like to respect the decisions, but I think that, you know, and, and, and according to their list of hardships or considerations, they're doing their job. It's just that okay. when it comes to look at the bigger picture, you know, it, it becomes obviously much more evolved. Well, should we, do you think we should reach out to the boards and commissions and say, yeah. you have an opportunity to sure. meet with us at any time, well, just let hurt. us know? I mean, it, it couldn't hurt. It might yeah. be something we're thinking about. Just, you know, we've all been in enough boards to know that you just, to get that next step or to take that step just needs a little pro, um, hmm. prompting. But they're all staffed by That's true. city staff members, yeah. and perhaps they can. I'm not saying that staff. there's any obstacle to coming forward, but I just don't know that there's been okay. any real incentive to do things. Alderman Burris, and then the mayor. Sure, I think Alderman Tender, you bring up a good point about the committees only see what they're doing, and they don't see the bigger picture, and so I think that's sometimes the frustration with the recommending bodies that our job is to see how everything is integrated. So one of the, the aspects of these boards and committees, and I, and I don't have any, I think we should do this, but just in general, how we can get them to see the bigger picture, even though we have people on Parks and Rec that that's their expertise, or preservation is their expertise. How do we get these committees to think more broadly and almost to cross-pollinate in, in some way. So like the Plan Commission has someone on economic development, and the Plan Commission also has a member on uh, the um, CD, uh, CDBG uh, committee. So I think that's also part of the training, and I'm not sure what we've done with training on boards at this point, but then that's an important aspect of Robert's Rules of Order for the committees, but giving them more of a sense of why we make the decisions we do, or we agree or we don't agree, but just a bigger picture, even a bigger picture about the budget 
for the city, most of the people on the committees, I would assume, they may or may not watch our budget hearings, they may or may not understand the budget, but to give them a bigger sense of that um, in a layman's person's terms, I think would be extremely helpful to these committees. So thank you for mentioning that. Do you think that they feel like they're up there all by themselves? I, I think they're doing, my sense, in, you know, I was on plan questions, you're doing your work and you're, you're trying to make the best recommendation you can, but you, you are, you're isolated, yeah. you're in a silo. It's, it's a bubble that you're in that you, and you know, preservation people, it's, that they love and they're interested in that, and the arts people are interested in that, but it's, I don't, I don't necessarily see when they come to talk to us or when, when they're, they're, you know, maybe angry mm. about decisions that are made at council, but I think sometimes they don't understand that there are all these different aspects of why we're making decisions. So they're only seeing this, their silo. And this, I'm, not, I'm not saying that that's wrong, right. which is right. sure. how it is. Madam Mayor. Someone suggested doing a survey, which I thought was a mm -hmm. great idea, so that we could get some feedback, and as part of the survey, could also say, if you'd like to come before the Rules Committee, that would be terrific, yeah. we'd like to have you. But I would love it to get a survey from them. I don't want to design the survey. Don't no, I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> so we could just ask them to ask us, you know, I think there should be a survey. I, I think we'd First. also like to know, do they feel well supported by staff? Uh, do they have the resources they need to do their work? Uh, what are their great frustrations, like running up against the politics? By the time decisions reach council, there are, there's more involved, as you suggest, coming. Mm -hmm. So. We could get some useful information. Yeah, we and, could. And yeah. Alderman Holmes. Well, pretty much, Jane pretty much covered it. I just think that we need to. Do they feel useful? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't don't want They'd to say it that it. way, They'd but um, because we could get them more inform more work. Do they feel yeah. heard? Yes. Yeah, maybe that's even better. Occasionally, I have a tactful moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Liz. <laughs> so, Madam Chair, members, the oh, yes. sorry. Yeah. Well, I guess just to add to the survey concept, uh, maybe to include something along the lines of we asking them if there are aspects of their standards that they feel like they can't really routinely meet. For example, ZBA has mm -hmm. a list of standards for things. Mm -hmm. They might perceive that they follow these guidelines, but when it comes to us, we look at it a little bit differently. So just get a sense of whether they feel like the standards need to be because adjusted. Our sign review and appeals board just <laughs> I think we just approved different standards for them and put them into the ordinance. So, so exactly that. So, survey one to each board and commission with a series of questions, and we'll then tabulate the responses and bring them back mm -hmm. to rules. Probably May or June. Oh, mm -hmm. Just one to each committee. Yes, one, one to one each committee. Each no, member. no, no, the committee. Committee and committee. committee. They have to work it out themselves. Maybe yeah. float it to us right. to look at before you send it out. See if we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, and, and right, that's a good job. See any responsibility of consolidating with any other board and commission. Or of abolishing their committee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as training. Um, you know, we, we have done training periodically, uh, not any time recently, where we kind of just do a general overview. We leave it to the individual staff, that staff the boards and commissions to kind of give more board-specific training. Should we offer that again? Should we put that as part of a survey and see what the reaction is? It, here's, here's the issue that I see. Uh, there's an etiquette and uh, a way to behave when you've got somebody before you asking you for something or to make a change and, and what the standard is. And I, I just, I, I don't care if you're a multi-million dollar developer or somebody there about a, you know, air conditioning unit in their side yard. People ought to be treated with respect and not treated, first of all, like children and number two, not be treated rudely. And I, I, I'm, I mean, if you've ever watched some of these meetings, you have to have seen it happen. And it's, so anyway, I, I, I'm not saying that, that they don't understand their, their charge, 
I'm saying it's the behavior that is an issue for me in terms of training. And what about at maybe asking them, you know, what could be, what could be helpful for them? What could we do to, you know, make their jobs or their experiences um, more useful, more helpful? On what type of training do they feel that they're, you know? I don't, I'm sure they don't think they need the kind of training I think they need. So I think that your no, I think your issue is a different issue. Is there are there things that you would like assistance with? Right, I hear you. Yeah, but you know, t training them with manners is going to be a very difficult. No, way I think you can. They might not or know. Or have to be civil because sometimes we have problems with that. So I think that you know we have to be very, very um, careful. But it's not an argument. That. It's you're, you're misunderseeing what I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm not seeing, seeing I'm an, like we have heated debates mm -hmm. and we get very upset with one another. This is not that. This is just ball face rudeness to one adult to another adult, mm -hmm. having nothing to do with the disagreement at all. Mm -hmm. And that's the reception. Yes. I, I, yes. Watched, I know what you're talking about. Yes. So um, is it the group's thought that we try training independent of all of this? Do we survey first and then? Yes. Do training, survey first, survey. and then in do training. Okay, great. And you had mentioned the cost of all of the, the boards. Have, do we report to the boards and committees how much staff time, how much it costs to run that committee annually? I think that's also something that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we're talking about budget, we're talking about overtime, that would be that the committees should know how much is this costing um, not only for the the staff person to be there at night but how much time are they spending on putting the packet together or, or whatever they're doing they could be nice to know too yeah, yeah. Ab exactly. absolutely I yeah. and the other thing about that though I, I, I love love your point because what about on the um, accountability and the commitment and dedication to accepting to be on the board. I was just thinking that. When yeah. you don't show up for a meeting and then it has to be canceled, all that money is just gone for a lot. Because uh, then you don't show up because you don't have a quorum, so you have to you know, cancel the meeting at the last minute, you know, that kind of thing. So all of those things are, you know, people don't think about it in terms of dollars and cents. We do, <laughs> you know, when it's budget time especially. But um, that's something I think people have to consider. On the other hand, those people who are serving, even though they might not show up sometime, and that's probably not very frequently, I mean, the time they give, it's, you know, we're all eternally grateful for that. Absolutely. And God knows uh, we know what it's like to give up your time. I was just saying more information for them is better. And just again, understanding the, the money aspect versus just the issue aspect of it. Because I think that's so many times where the disconnect comes from committee's recommendations to the council. It, it, we are always balancing the money aspects of it and uh, the committees don't have to do that in the same way. So giving them more data. And, I mean, it just goes to show you how much, how important we think these jobs are. I mean, we staff yeah. them. And, all right, so you have the survey, and then we'll see what comes of that, and Great. that might lead us down a different path. Great. All righty. Um, okay, then we're on to the exciting part, discussion of the use of Room 2404 for City Council committee meetings. How are we uh, doing here? Feels good? Well, as you know, uh, with, the, with the camera replacement that we did in the council chambers last summer, uh, there was an interest in returning to this room for committee meetings. Um, I think with the way the room had been configured, uh, I think I heard from nearly all of you uh, that there was a sense that that wasn't working because of the way the room was configured. Um, obviously, we try to get, we need to get the committee in, we need to get staff in, we need to get the press in. Um, and so I've been talking with, with the city manager's office staff as to perhaps other things we can do. <coughs> we came up with this configuration uh, which is one we hadn't tried. So I, like I think it. I like this better than the. Yeah. It was better good than job. it was the last good time. Good job. This is good for CD like too. <laughs> and do you think it'll be good for economic development? This table. I think it will. Yeah. Be. yeah. So so I think one question is, 
if we were to do this configuration for A, P, W, P, and D, we could probably get rid of the, the table on the end. So that makes a little bit more room for, for, um, for chairs. Uh, we've, we put two press tables back because normally we would have four, four organizations normally more or less covering us. The two that are here this evening, uh, plus the Daily Northwestern and um, the round table and the patch is kind of in and out these days. Uh, we would need a place for a recording secretary, uh, which we could put over there in that corner uh, as well. Um, we put chairs on the perimeter because I think that if we use them for P the room for P and D and A and PW, uh, we would likely need to put people on the perimeter. So I wanted to make sure you were comfortable with that. We have a podium there um, so that if there's presentations, uh, we have that. We have the two televisions, uh, which uh, we can use for PowerPoint presentations. And maybe Erica, you can maybe just turn the, this one on behind us. Um, so we can we can show. PowerPoints on both screens, so depending on where you're sitting. Um, we could also show the live feed of uh, what's going out uh, to the community on either one. We're having some difficulties with that screen this evening, but if you'll, uh, in a minute, I think you'll be able to see um, what the feed looks like coming out of uh, this room. Um, looks good. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a presentation if we could. Just gives you an idea. So that's the camera feed? So we can switch over to what the live feed. Looks great. I'm sorry. Okay. So Anderson, if you're listening, if you could uh, switch the feed, or, or maybe Erica can go over and, and prompt him. Uh, so, with, is the council comfortable then moving committee meetings back here unless we know that the the attendance of you know, for example, this evening's Human Services Committee meeting, the right. numbers of people coming would probably not make sense for this room. Um, but so absent that, would that work? Question. Uh, sometimes I need electric if I'm not all yeah, the two stuff. Is that, I mean, is there any way we could make it a little more convenient for them? Putting the, uh, well, there's one over here. here. That's, that's my so concern and what yeah. my right. concern with the one before is that it, it, it's hard to plug in and if there's any if there's 20 people yeah it's but if very we, tight but if here. the extension cord is added to under the table that really works great we do well, we have to someplace don't we? yeah we do time. but yeah. not we have the table that the press uses and the council chambers has a extension cords built into right. it no but we well, have i think in 2200 is yeah. don't you can now you can see but that. we can just do it here okay. yeah tell them just to do it here mm -hmm. Well, I don't think we need spending. Do we have to spend more money for that? Because no, we spend enough. I'll already. bring my extension cords. We'll just yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't cost anything. It's not adding. Well, well we can we can make we can. Like this room. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, but I mean, but but, but uh, we're here tonight to talk about this. So, yeah. uh, if if the, you're you're not comfortable, we can just go back to the council chambers and do other things. I do like it, but I I don't. The cord is just something that can be done. Yes. Well, I, I just I feel like it's a little better suited for um, meetings like this. You know, shorter duration, not as many people likely to be here from the public. I think for things like APW and P and D, um, just you know, tend to have more materials. Have paperwork. Good, good point. I'd like to be able to you know, set up, spread out, have all my stuff and um, cords or whatever, and to be able to look at who's here. You know, it, but again, for small working groups like community volunteers, <coughs> CDBG, mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. this is much more suited for that, and it's more right. conversational. But um, those, I think, are more formal, and that's what I think that's good. For me, so. so the other, which should be in the council chambers, so well, PDA, council PDA, 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 right? The council, the council, the council yeah, ones, yeah, right. Doors. That's tough. Yeah, I mean, I, I can. I'm, I can be flexible with whatever. I'll go along with whatever. But so, you're right. I mean, we but, I, but I just had to express yeah. what I'm. We're not. We're not really. thinking about having all the AMTW stuff, the Bilsa stuff, the P and D stuff. We're not thinking about having all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah and then course. also, then also, um, <coughs> like we have stuff at our desk, the council yeah. agenda and things, yeah. and we're gonna have to lift everything up and take it. Yeah, you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, we're all there, and, and we have so many for HPW, and we just we leave have it. So much staff. Just leave it there. Yeah, I think and presentations and whatever. But I like this room for uh, uh, other kind of meeting. 
So are we backing away from the direction the staff that led to this room being wired? And no, I wouldn't say you're backing away. I think it's your your I your. Remember those deliberations. I do. Twenty two hundred. <laughs> I hate that room. Twenty two hundred. I think that's. That was, this so, was an alternative. So, wasn't it? in your mind, is it worth it for us to have made these changes to this room, if only just to host the smaller? Which are not even in those well, for, from my perspective, the discussion you're having tonight on issues is tremendous. That to, to have you in a less formal setting talking about the things that are on this agenda tonight make a lot of sense. So mm -hmm. if we can use this room for those kind of discussions, you know, if a board or commission wants to come and talk about what they're doing, that makes sense to have it in here. If, if we're not having that kind of discussion, the same night as a human services meeting, that probably doesn't make sense to go to the trouble of getting this room all set up. Um, again, economic development, if it has more presentations and things, I think that uh, we could move economic development into this room on a regular basis. We don't currently uh, televise economic development, so I think that would be a question if you wanted to do that. Um, but I think it, now that it's here, we just need to know how to use it. And I don't want, again, if the, the council was, once we put this, the cameras in, uh, Alderman Holmes and others were uncomfortable. And it wasn't just Alderman Holmes. I think Alderman Wynn was, was not particularly comfortable. Um, so I'm here to get direction. So I think the direction is uh, regular Monday evening, AMPWP and D, continue in the council chambers. Use this for rules as it makes sense. Use this for team building council goals, other kinds of things, and then we'll make it available for the Economic Development Committee. If they, Even if it's not on television, perhaps this room is better suited. I think it is. Um, and so we can go ahead and move economic development in here. And so it's not to, and so it's not to feel so uh, disagreeable with everyone, but I think the first experience in here, the first night that we met in here with the, confi uh, the configuration, the way it was, and the number of people that were here, probably sent me over the edge with it because it was just not a good night. I mean, it wasn't a good experience. So. Well, and I think you're going to see tonight when you have to lift up all this stuff and Which go in the other absolutely. room, it's it's uh, inconvenient. Absolutely. So on a night council night. Yeah, yes. I think too, I mean, if, if um, plan, um, plan Commission or ZPA, I think it's a much nicer room for residents mm -hmm. to come up if they're, they're you know, asking for variances and things. It's, I think it's just a little more intimate and less intimidating. Uh, intimidating. And, and I think that would be a really good use for this room. And that can be, that would be televised, right? Yeah. Well, those yeah. are already yeah. televised. Right. But so I mean, I mean you can switch from there to here. Yes. 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 No problem. We can certainly yes. offer it to them and Especially let them. Yeah, let them decide. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah. But I, I bet they're going to like it. They try it. Because I think the goal setting that the council did in the automatic library I think you all were pleased with that. Yes. And so this yeah. kind of replicates that. Mm -hmm. And since we have the, the, the stationary cameras already here, great. Any comments? Okay. Uh, so, all right, you don't need to vote on that. Right? I do not. No, no. All right. Um, so, next uh, steps for council goal setting and team building workshops? Uh, again, ma Madam Chair, members of the committee, we, uh, we had a series of the goal setting. Uh, workshops uh, at the end of last year. I think though they were well received. Uh, we really hadn't talked about next steps of a facilitated discussion uh, with the council. Uh, we've talked earlier this evening about kind of reporting back to you, um, which I think you seem comfortable with. And I don't think there's any need for a facilitator. But the question would be, at what point would it make sense uh, to either bring Ms. Monander back to have further discussions with you? I think you all are comfortable with her. If you were not, we could certainly look for someone else. Uh, my sense as your city manager was that those it was great to have a third party facilitator that you all seemed comfortable with to have those discussions. And so uh, Ms. Bonander has indicated that she's willing to continue to work with us with you know certain notice and whatnot. Um, but we've not talked about it. you've not talked about it. Disagree. What is your timing when what it would be the ideal timing? to do this? Well, um, I, I think there's, there's there's different components. I think from a goal setting standpoint, uh, the council has set goals for the year, uh, perhaps in the fall as part of the budget discussions, it might make sense to revisit that. Um, I think then there's also a question of team building and uh, would you like to have other kind of facilitated discussions, again, in a format like this as part of a public meeting, um, to talk about issues? Uh, committee? 
I, th I think she did a good job of, of keeping us focused and um, moving along. Um, it's not an easy group to, to, to do that with. Um, so I, I mean, I, I think she did a good job. Yeah, I, I, I thought the meetings were productive, yeah. Mm, I did too. I, I really did. And I think I give her some like, credit for that. I think she really did a good job. I think if we have anyone, we should have her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So would you like to have a, a broader discussion with her about issues? Um, would you just prefer to wait for a goal setting and kind of have it revisited at that point? I think that would make some sense. Then we kind of know if we have issues to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. work through. Did we do team have. building before? Uh, not really. Because I forgot what team I'm on. If we did. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did team building once with the high school school board and we had to do rock wall climbing. Oh, it's it awful. And I'm not suggesting that the city council do that. I have to do wall climbing. I don't want to do team building. That's case you all want to do. But having conversations like this around a smaller table in the context of a public meeting, um, my observation is that all city councils benefit from that, including this one. So um, we can just continue to have those kind of conversations on issues um, in, a, in a more conducive setting as, as need be, rather than having someone yeah. come tell you to do that. In your, in your travels uh, with the city manager organizations, do you ever come across councils that do retreats? Uh, to the extent that state law allows, yes. I'm just going to ask, how, does, how, would that, how do they do that? Well, I, th I think that... Um, in California, there used to be an exception to the open meeting law that allowed uh, groups to do that, and uh, groups abused it, and the state legislature in California took that ability away. Um, in Illinois, we can continue to meet within the jurisdiction. Um, so I think that if you wanted to go someplace else to have that a different setting, um, you could do that. The ability to have any kind of to not have it as anything but an open session is very limited. I think we've talked uh, in the past that um, you know the, the evaluation of the city manager, which the council does in closed session, is probably the only time that this council and other councils in Illinois have an opportunity um, to talk in, in specific terms and giving direction to the city manager under the personnel exemptions of the open meeting laws in Illinois. But short of that, anything the council would do would have to be an open meeting. Well, we do have to evaluate you sometime. Yeah, that should turn up soon. Yeah. The, um, the District 202 School Board did a retreat, and I believe it was off site. I don't know for sure. Uh, one or two weeks ago on a Saturday, and spent the day doing retreat kind of stuff. Team building. I mean, that's what I, I think. I don't too. know no. what their agenda was, but we can find out exactly. And, and they have the same um, uh, obligations under the Open Meetings Act, so. Yeah, we can find out how they worked with the Open Meetings Act and, and what their agenda was. So it, are you saying the reports that... reports were that it was, it was if, really a good working day. If you meet off-site, there's an exception. I didn't... I didn't there is not. I didn't, I didn't quite get... Oh, in, in other places. In other places, oh, there are. Other places. Other places. Other places. But not in Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be time well spent. Something we can't find. So it's not so much question. <laughs> What we'll discuss, it's a matter of whether or not we can do it. So I don't know if we've answered that question. No, I don't think we have. We have plenty to talk about. So um, the goal setting and team building and goal setting wouldn't necessarily be together. That's correct. Yes. <coughs> so um, anybody like to make a recommendation or a motion? Or are we, are we, are we talking gonna... about the meeting or the retreat? Or... The uh, goal setting. Let's yes. zero in on goal setting. I would think the goal setting could be part of the mm -hmm. city manager's evaluation. Mm -hmm. We could consider having Jean Bonander at that time. It hurt at his evaluation? I wouldn't yeah, like that. Yeah, it's part of to do with your goals. I don't like that. Yeah. He's ours, um, not hers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. You're welcome. <laughs> But you know, and I, I mean, that doesn't, that, that, it's an important thing, the evaluation. I don't think we need her help for that. Do you? So what is it? Is I, 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 I agree with coming you. up? Huh? I agree with you. The mayor tells me soon. It's, it should be soon. We, 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 we were going to put it on the next up. rules agenda. Yeah, no, it's oh. 
According to our official. March, mm -hmm. really? Okay. Well, we're not, we're going to be late because officially we're always late. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, and we want to be official, so yeah. we need to be late. It wouldn't be right to, to do it in March because that would be inconsistent with that. So right. I, I think what I'm hearing the council say is that the, that for, for goal setting, perhaps to have Ms. Bonander come back out in the fall as part of the budget process, not unlike the, the session or two that we did this past fall seemed to make sense. Um, and so then the question is, would you want to try to have some sort of retreat goal setting, or not goal setting, but communications, discussions, I think those are largely what retreats do is you know, help groups communicate better. Why don't we have our uh, Corporation Council get back to us with what we actually are able to do so we can have an idea what the conversation Perhaps we can have our Corporation Council get back to us with the um, parameters of what we can do so we can sort of have a better idea as to you know, whether we have to climb rock walls or... <laughs> I'm out. I've got arthritis. Swim in <laughs> 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 Maybe go to Galena or someplace. <laughs> Give him some time to do that. Okay, very good. We can both be team captains. Okay, so uh, uh, it's a competition. <laughs> I think so. And, 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 and Madam Chair, members of the committee, just one last question then for you. Um, would be other things you'd like to discuss at, at rules? I think we've come up with a list of, of, of a few things this evening. Is there any other structural organizational issues that are the purview of this committee that you'd like to talk about in the future meeting? Well, just I, just let me say one thing. If we're going to do the evaluation, then we have we already have a busy schedule. Okay, go ahead. Go okay, I have a question, but I and I think I was saving it to bring to rules because I'm not sure where to go with it. At my last ward meeting, uh, an issue came up um, in terms of a resident asking a question. Um, the, the the chief had uh, new recruits at the meeting, and um, they got up and introduced themselves and wow. talked about where they're from, blah, blah, blah. And one person wanted to know from them, did uh, as a part, and they talked about their orientation and everything. So the, the person wanted to know as a part of their orientation, um, were they told about incentives from the city? They were talking particularly about uh, um, housing and that kind of thing. And, and of course, you know, the chief jumped in right away and said, well, you know, these are new people, that's not a fair question for them, blah, blah, blah. You know, we did not cover that. And then, of course, I jumped in and said, well, I would think that's a part of the HR packet that right. they would receive. Right. Okay, so all of a sudden, as I said it, I realized I had no idea what the HR packets are. Maybe some of the rest of you know, um, but I'm just wondering, are you interesting? Yeah. Would you like yeah. to know? Because then I thought, mm, I'd like to know what yeah. it is that Good we point. say to new mm -hmm. employees and how do we, you know, what, what it is that we say. Now I've had some other conversations and I found out there, of course, some of the programs that we used to offer, we don't offer anymore because we just don't have the, like uh, some of the, uh, uh, joint programs with banks and stuff for our employees. I know we don't have some of those anymore. But I just realized that I don't have that information and I wonder about the rest of you. Maybe the rest of you do. Sure. So it would be good to get a new employee packet and, and so we it, can and find out what it is that we say to our new employees when they come and, and what it is. And, and I think we ought to be able to. <laughs> I felt really lost after I had opened my mouth and said, oh, well, that's just a part of the HR package. And I thought, well, how do I know that? Mm -hmm. I don't know that. So. You're hoping there's an HR package. <laughs> Well, there, there is, uh, and, and actually it's been a topic of discussion among the management team over the last uh, couple of months, and so we're, we're looking to revise uh, really the whole orientation or onboarding is the, is the, new, the new fancy term uh, to, to, to uh, as people become employees. So uh, we'd be happy to make a presentation. There is no incentive uh, as far as the housing, so there is, there is nothing that we present to people. There are no existing programs. Um, from time to time, as housing developments have gone up, uh, uh, certainly the, uh, the, the NSP2 project, we've made mm -hmm. information available to employees, but that was really kind of a one-off mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing. So there are no other types of incentives. That, but there used that, to be, see, and that's the, that's the thing, because there used to be like the first 
prime homeowners buyers yeah. program. Employees. There was a thing with the banks, like uh, I know some of the other um, companies in the city still offer um, uh, incentives for their employees. I think it's with First Bank, I believe. Okay, I, and those are different. I mean, so so there are there are separate from housing incentives, and I really wouldn't even call it incentives, okay, but but but, 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 but but programs that because we bank at First Bank and Trust. I think our employees are eligible for. Well, I'm not sure uh, anymore. Well, I, 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 I'm telling you, they yeah. are. Oh, I, okay. I, I know for a fact that they are. Oh, okay. Um, you know, quite honestly, we shy away from those kinds of relationships only because uh, sometimes there's a, 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 an assumed uh, quid with yeah. some of those yeah. things, and so um, you know, for those that you know, like the First Bank and Trust offers this to all of their large account holders. It's mm -hmm. not just because. We're the city of Evanston that they do that. Um, Evanston Athletic Club and LA Fitness, for example, mm -hmm. uh, our employees are eligible for sort of group plans at those two facilities, but so are the employees of other large organizations in Evanston. So uh, that kind of information we do make available mm -hmm. uh, to folks, um, but from a housing perspective, there's nothing consistent. We'd be happy to come to rules at a future meeting and talk That'd about that. That'd be good. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That's thank a good reason. Sure. All right, you probably are. Any other, um, any new business, anybody? Oh, you just had new business. That was my new business. Anything, um, Alderman Burris and Alderman Braithwaite, would you like to share? I'm sorry, we're, we're talking about it. They're climbing. They're rock climbing. I know, I know. They're climbing. All right, um, motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Thank you.